Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're here at 590 Madison Avenue in New York City at the big IBM announcement today, flash ahead. I'm here with Vincent Sue, who's an IBM fellow and CTO of the storage business. Vincent, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you. Good to see you again. So, uh, big announcement today. Um, you guys are all in on Flash. Talk about uh, Flash as a game changer. Why is it such a game changer from a technical perspective? You know, over the last you know, 50 years, the whole system design and the software applications are written pretty much to try to accommodate the I.O. problem. As you can see that for the last you know, 10 years, the CPU has improved uh, 10 times, network improved 100 times, but storage 3 performance-wise only improved 1.5, 1.2 times. A lot of the system architectures and software are really trying to work around their problems. Now when the I.O. bottleneck is removed, Okay, you all of a sudden, a lot of things become possible. Okay, not just the traditional application. Now you can do more because we can do more with a much shorter time. Yeah, so um, on the one hand, we heard from customers today that they're basically dropping in a, an all flash array. Mm -hmm. It's a block based device, mm -hmm. looks like any block based device, and it immediately mm -hmm. accelerates performance. On the other hand, uh, over time, there's great potential to sort of re-architect infrastructure and applications. Mm -hmm. What do you see as, as, as that potential and how will that change infrastructure, applications, and ultimately business? Yeah, so, so for example, today, the, let me just give you a most, one of the most obvious example. Today in the, in the database design, we, everybody do database reorganization, database reorg, right? You have to reorg database, why? Because you want to get the best performance, so you need the data sort of adjacent to each other on the, on the platter. Okay, we need to question that those businesses probably not doesn't need to do it anymore or doesn't need to do as often anymore. So all these parameters that we do and to tune our system, those had to be rethink. Even in our I/O path, okay, today we try to buffer up as much as possible because go to this is very slow, right? How much metadata you can put in the system to make the sense, so it allow you to make sense from the data. Those things in the past is very hard to do because every little I.O. go to disk is very slow. But now, because the flash, uh, flash enabled system allow you to put a much better metadata rich systems available. So you can do a lot more with the, what you have. So let's talk about metadata a little bit. So metadata sure. today is sort of locked in the, the device, whether it's a network device, a server, an array. Uh, and it's sort of controlled by, by that device. Do you see that changing? Will this whole notion of software-led or software-defined you know, infrastructure allow metadata to actually be a shared resource? Uh, first of all, first question, and second question is, where is that going to get managed? Okay, so you are absolutely correct that the metadata is where, uh, first of all, I mean, metadata will allow you to make sense from the data, from the raw data you have. So that is, I think that we are getting to the we are getting to the point that this world going to have a very very metadata rich information. Okay, but in the past, because the metadata is you know compared to the raw data, metadata is much smaller. You know, you go to those smaller I/O, it, it costs you a lot. So a lot of people that buffer up the metadata in the in the DRAM memory. So it's sort of limited the amount of data metadata you can have. But these days, with the now that with the flash systems available you're able to do a much better rich metadata and be able to share between the different applications. The thing is that these days, there are the lot of time that we see over and over again, different applications have the same content, but they cannot really share the data without reshape their metadata around the raw data. So now with this kind of technology, we enable you to be able to share those uh, uh, share those content much easier once you can transform those metadata quicker. Yeah, so you heard in my, in my panel that I was hosting, I was doing some back of the napkin calculations last night and I had, I had uh, you know, CPU speeds at, at, at mm -hmm. na nanoseconds, 10 to the mm -hmm. minus nine, and, and, and disk speeds uh, 10 to the minus three, six orders of magnitude, delta. I'm not sure if that's exactly right, but it's, it's Close big, enough. Right? Close yes, enough, yeah. right? So my question then is, Who's going to control that metadata? You can't really control that metadata from slow storage. Doesn't it have to be controlled from fast servers? In the past, people tried to put all the metadata in the DRAMs. Because if you control the metadata in the slow storage, then it's just too slow. 
right? It's just, especially the metadata is a very small I.O. Small I.O. is re extremely expensive mm -hmm. to the hard disk. But the problem is if you want to have a large amount of metadata to make your data, to be able to make sense from your data, that you cannot put everything in DRAM. And that's where the flash, all flash system come into play here. Yeah, excellent. So, um, so how do you see this thing progressing? You guys are putting a billion dollars in. Obviously, you've got you know, investments, organic and potentially inorganic. We're going to ask Steve Mills about that. But where do you see this whole flash thing playing out over time? Okay, so the flash optimization is across all the la layers. From the fundamental core technology, that's what uh, the Texas memory system has done a superb job in the you know to make the flash more uh, durable and you know high performance. Then you ha we have an overall system design, the power system, syst uh, Z systems, and storage systems. How do I design the system so rest of the system is not going to be the bottleneck, right? Then we have a middleware design to take advantage of that. Remember, I talked about the database reorders, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of you know the sort of software defined storage interface to allow the allow the middleware application to be able to truly take advantage of those technology. Because at the end of the day, people don't want to spend their time to fine tune where the data placement is going to be. They want to be able to talk to this 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 devices. At the end of the day, what IBM Vision is going to be take this storage problem from application. All you see is an infinite flat space. You can just rewrite to it and everything will be persistent. Back to the days of single level store. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's super fast. All right, Vincent Sue, thanks very much for coming back on theCUBE and uh, great to hear your perspective. So keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest.